Good morning, y'all. This is Gene Jensen. Today we're going to talk about fishing weedless paddle tail swim baits in the grass. The idea for this video stemmed from a Bass University video I was watching um, by JT Kenny. He went through so much information about paddle tail swim baits from fishing really shallow to really deep. And I was going to make a video about all of that and I was like, you know what, let me just pick one little section of that video and talk about it. I'm down here in Florida where he fishes a lot and, uh, and this technique he talked about was specifically for submerged vegetation. This can work all over the country. It can work in little lakes, ponds, big lakes, anywhere where you have submerged vegetation or vegetation that just comes to the surface. and. You, your issue is you've got vast amount of them where you've got to be able to cover a lot of water with it. This little weedless paddle tail swim bait trick is amazing. It catches a lot of fish and it catches big ones. <laughs> All right, so this is kind of, this is what I'm talking about. And uh, JT shows this exact swim bait in his, uh, in his seminar. I don't know if he's sponsored by Gambler or not, but it's a, uh, a Gambler Big Easy. And uh, it is, what I use when I'm down here in Florida and what I use in the grass, it's got a lot of kick to it. That tail right there, you can buzz it across the surface like a buzz bait. You can swim it just under the surface. It has a good, got a good wobble, good tail. Uh, other swim baits work good. Um, just make sure they've got a good big boot tail and uh, that they have a lot of action in the back end of their bait. Um, Kitex would work. Uh, they just wouldn't be as durable. These fish freaking crush it. Strike King Rage Swimmer, I can go through a whole list of them, but it's a solid body paddle tail swim bait, not the hollow bodies. Now the hook I use is a weighted, a keel weighted swim bait hook. And I take a, uh, a hitchhiker and I put a hitchhiker up on the eye of that hook, just like that. And by just threading the swim bait onto the hook keeper, onto the hitchhiker, you make it Pretty dang weedless, pretty dang snagless. Sometimes you have to, oh, I did a horrible job of that, there we go. Sometimes you have to tuck the point in or anything or something like that, but that's what it looks like. You can get this thing through just about anything. Um, and it is an incredible uh, weedless, weedless lure. All right, sorry guys, I had to cover up my mouth. I was sucking in bugs when I was talking. So let's talk about the equipment that you've got to use uh, for this. You're fishing submerged grass. You look behind me, I've got this huge, giant, miles of miles of submerged vegetation. A little bit tops out here and there. Um, it's got uh, hydrilla, it's got all kinds of different grasses and things like this. And like I said, this can work all over the country. But uh, the equipment that you use, if you ever get a even a two pounder in the grass like this and they get you buried in that grass, you have got to have enough power behind you to to be able to get that fish out of the grass. This is a reaction bait technique, so you don't have to worry too much about line visibility. I don't use fluorocarbon. I use straight braid, 50 pound test braid, and uh, I use a medium heavy, seven foot five, this is my jig rod, seven foot five, and I would recommend either a medium heavy or a heavy between seven, three and, and eight feet. I mean, if you're chunking and covering a lot of water and you need that added distance, go with a longer rod it really doesn't matter you just got to have enough beef behind it high speed reel eight one to one gear ratio reel will get you uh will be able to catch up with those fish because when they hit it they hit it hard and a lot of times they come at you and hit it and you've got to be able to catch up to them and then when they get buried in the grass you want to be able to keep them out of the grass as much as you can so that high speed reel is totally critical other than that that should be a pretty good setup uh, match the size hook to the size of your bait. This is a six aught on a big easy. If it was a, just like a, a easy swimmer as the other one, I'd use a five aught. Uh, I just don't want the bend of that hook to, or the, the hook to go in past where that action of that tail is. The longer the hook, the more action it takes away from your bait. So smallest hook possible. Make sure it's a heavy wire because you're using braided line. If it's a light wire hook, you're going to, uh, you're going to bend that hook out. And then the lightest kill weight that you can get away with depending on how deep you can go deep you can go heavier if you're going to want to keep it under the surface but if you're buzzing it on the top just a light one just to keep it keep it upright and keep it uh, going in the right direction now this is a technique that you can use literally most of the year i wouldn't use it in the winter time but you always hear the saying um the bass can be found in the grass or the bass are in the grass 
Uh, if you've got a grass lick, then that's where the bass are going to hang out. They're going to hang out there in the summertime because the grass creates oxygen and hot water doesn't hold oxygen. So they're going to move into that grass. Uh, the springtime, they spawn in it because it's got the protection that they need. In the fall, they feed in it because that's where the bait fish are. They're always in the grass. There are always a population of the fish in the grass. Uh, some of them might be out deep on a bigger lake, but there's always going to be a good population in the grass. And so that's what I'm looking for. I've done this technique in, in Leech Lake, Minnesota. I've done it all, I've done it in Pennsylvania. I've done it all over the country. So it's one of those things that you're not limited to just Florida because there's nothing but grass lakes down here. There's grass lakes everywhere. All right, so like I said, this is a power fishing technique. This is a cover water, get reaction strike technique. You make long casts. Because you're fishing shallow grass, you just kind of buzz it back to you on the surface. It's kind of like a buzz bait. But if you use a buzz bait doing this, it gets hung up in everything. So that's why this is a little superior or a lot superior to a buzz bait. Um, a whopper plopper wouldn't work because it's a treble hook bait. It, but this is like fishing a weedless whopper plopper on the surface. And you're just covering water as fast as you can. It's a little harder in a kayak. If I had a trolling motor, it'd be really nice and I could do it. But, uh, but usually I just let the wind drift me across the grass flats and and just chunk and wind and chunk and wind and just cover as much water as I can. Now the key is, is once you get bit, anchor down, stop. Because in the grass like this, the, there's one, oh, there's a big one too. Gosh almighty, I'm gonna try to get him again. He ripped my freaking bait in half. Oh. Now another thing that uh, JT mentions in his video is that a really good follow-up bait is a hollow body frog so i've got my six five frog rod on a concept z oops and i make a one my first cast is always a bad cast when i pick up this short rod but it's a teaser throw it in there you know where that fish is you just sit there and twitch it and i may have waited a little too long to do this but Typically, it's a good little deal, but always have that frog ready to cast right after you miss a fish like that. All right, let me put a put a new worm on. Now, a lot of times when fishing this kind of grass, you can see holes in the grass, or like that, a fish blows up and uh, and you uh, you know about where they're hanging out. You know there's a hole right there. So what you do is um, throw back out there. Bring it up to the hole, so I'm buzzing it across the surface. I bring it to the hole and then I kill it. And I watch my line, and if there's a fish in there and it hits, that line's gonna go doink, and it's gonna go that way. And load, you know, lower your rod down and set the hook and set the hook hard and get that fish out of the grass. Uh, that's one thing a buzz bait can't do. A buzz bait can go and you kill it and the buzz bait just goes and just falls crazy like. And so it's kind of hard to to get a fish to hit a buzz bait fallen. But with this one, you get their attention with the buzzing tail, and then you kill it right there in the hole and let it sink on down and wait for that line to go pook and set the hook. So one thing I love about kayak fishing is one, you can get into a lake like this that boats can't get into. And two, it forces you to catch fish right where you're at. So. It forces you to uh, to cover a small area very thoroughly. You tend to catch more fish doing that. You don't pass up a lot of fish like I do in my boat. My boat helps me find fish fast. Man, there's the, no doubt that's important. Now another cool trick that JT mentioned in his in his video, and I don't have one, have a punch skirt to do this with, but you take a punch skirt. And this is this is works when the bass are hitting it while it's under the surface. If they want to buzz it on top, if you, they want it buzzed on top, this doesn't work because it's it's basically you, you kill the action when you buzz it on top. But you take and you put a punch skirt in front of the hook, and then you put about a quarter ounce tungsten weight in front of the punch skirt. Rig it up just like that. Throw it out, and as you're going through the water, that skirt undulates on the, in the front of that swim bait. And so if they're hitting it below the surface, that's an excellent way to, to get the big ones to bite. That's one of those tricks and secrets that you learn 
in those Bash University seminars and in the Bash University videos that uh, that really uh, you never think of. I mean, they the cool thing is those guys do share a lot of their secrets uh, while they're doing that. But a big old tilapia. You guys see that big old tilapia? Good grief. Alright, so what just happened is I just ran this whole stretch of grass and the only place I got bit was up there. I missed two because I got a little too excited with the hook set. <laughs> but uh just like fishing a topwater frog, when they bite, you gotta give them a second. Got one, two, set the hook. I didn't do that. <laughs> so yeah, you gotta treat it like a top water. Got him. Well, he ripped through the grass. Ooh. He thinks he's a big one. <laughs> this guy had high hopes. He thought he was big. a little dinky do so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys this is a perfect spot to show you guys about how to fish holes I don't think there's any fish in these holes because they've been hitting out on these points but I'm still gonna throw across this grass map get across those holes and I'm just gonna reel it real fast till I get to that hole come two three inches in and then kill it and watch my line three four seconds reel to the next hole kill it watch my line and if that line jumps or if it goes tight real quick, literally two, two reels down, set the hook. They already have it in their mouth. It's not like top water. You don't have to wait a couple of seconds. Wham, wham, bam, and just whoo, hold on for the fight because a lot of times it's a big one. Bunch of small guys up here. I had to give that one some time to get that swim bait in his mouth. <laughs> that was real. Hopefully he's a little male guarding a bed with a big old female on it. swimming that one under the surface. You may not want it buzzed on the top. I figured out that they seem to want it more under under the surface and not buzzed on top. I started catching them. Not big ones, but I'm catching them pretty consistently. 
and that's the trick that's the key is just trying to fine-tune that presentation figure out what kind of mood they're in they're moody little fish but try to figure out what mood they're in and you can capitalize on it oh there's another one oh i missed him i knew he didn't have a good probably took my tail off yep <laughs> All right, so one thing about this technique, these little hitchhikers, when the bass rip the bait off the hitchhiker, it pretty much makes it almost impossible to re reuse this bait. Unless you keep some super glue with you. So what I do, is you see when you rip off the hitchhiker, it always leaves a core of that plastic inside that hitchhiker. Well, what I do is I leave that core in there because it's going to help me uh, help the glue adhere to the hitchhiker. Take that super glue, find the, cram it down on that tip, put some of it on there, and then I simply stick the corkscrew down in there and I just turn it just a couple of turns. Put the hook in there and that'll hold it until it dries and i just let it hang off my boat for about 20 30 seconds let it dry real good and then go back to fishing so always have super glue with you when you're doing this hey i have to try to have super glue with me all the time because it's always good to be able to repair soft plastics but uh good little good little tip a la the fluke master You gotta have a high speed reel because they'll come at you. You wanna keep them out of the grass. Came back to the same area I was getting a bit. Not the same fish, but he hammered it. It's like throwing a buzz bait over the grass, guys. Awesome. I'm gonna try to catch a few more. But that's the basics of it. Buzz it on the surface, you can drop it down just barely underneath the surface and reel it there's so many different ways to fish it it's so versatile that uh there's no reason why you can't try it anywhere you're at before i go check out the links down the, down below i uh i negotiated with bass university got them to be able to give you guys a five got five dollar discount on both uh, annual and a monthly subscription uh the coupon codes are down there um, I'm just excited to be able to work with Bass University finally. Uh, Ike and Ellie and, and Pete Glusek has been, have been friends of mine for a long time. We finally figured out how to, uh, how to work together. Um, I've been uh, using their content for years uh, to teach myself how to do certain te techniques so I can teach you in video. This is me returning the favor. So, uh, but like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water, go out and catch some fish. Have a great day. We'll see ya.